my activism started when I was 13, you know, in Chile um, in 1973, there was a dictatorship in 73, I was five years old. And um, I remember, you know, when there was a military coup after the Allende government. Uh, by the age of, of, age of 13, um, and my sister was 12, we actually got involved with what was the Youth Communist Party in Chile. Because in Chile, because of that dictatorship, we, we had to you, you either take a stand or not. People were very, very afraid because the dictatorship, the dictatorship was very cruel, was bad, but we wanted to change. And we actually joined in a clandestine way because it was illegal. And I started activism to try to change uh, things. You know, we started with, you know, protesting, you know, leaflets, pamphleting, um, you know, graffiti, you know, uh, and, and we knew, you know, that that was dangerous and it, it got more dangerous with time. Uh, but I, I got involved very young and for many years, you know, um, we fought against the dictatorship. Um, then in 1987, when I was 19 years old, I was imprisoned because of my political activism. I was in jail not very long, I was two months. But I was very lucky that I did not disappear and I was not killed. Um, of course, I was interrogated, which is what they do um, for a couple of days. And um, that was very nice. But, you know, I knew why I was doing that I was doing. And when we actually involved in, in our countries, many of us know the risks that we take in working uh, active in different fronts. For the last 34 years in Australia, I haven't left, and I do. Um, I feel very strong that, you know, whatever you are, if you, if you, I, I don't know if I wanna call myself a revolutionary or an activist, you, you don't leave that. I think you do it in all aspects of your life. In what I teach at the university to my students about fighting for the rights and, and, and you know, to not to allow the, you know, to be exploited, uh, working, but also being the best that they can be in whatever they do is really important. Uh, at the same time, being on the streets, you know, in activism because of the, the, the to, to fight for justice, you know, not just for me, but for others. And so I've been very involved with working with you know, different communities, different countries in Latin America and other countries, you know, from, from Palestine, uh, with, you know, Julian Assange. And, and uh, I was, you know, last weekend, um, I was with the Kurdish women. And, and other groups that for, for years we've been with Tamil, you know, in other communities as well, because I believe in justice, you know, I believe in, in social justice in different aspects. Yeah. The main message that I've been giving so far is for the Latin American community, because for many of them is, um, they're very happy that for the first time a woman of Latin American origin is actually going for, for the Senate. Uh, as a candidate for the Senate. Um, many people of the Latin American community know me and I know where I stand. And the message is, is about the main things that I that I believe in is to do with health. Uh, I, I work in health. Uh, I'm a, I've been a nurse for more than 20 years, but I also am an educator. I teach the physician nurses and midwives. And for me, health is quite important. It's part of my my PhD, my doctorate work as well, to make health accessible to all, uh, universal health, public health, good quality health, uh, where the health workers are also looked after, not just the patients, because if we are looked after as health workers, the patients will be looked after. Um, education, because I'm an educator as well, uh, also free universal education, good quality and accessible for all, uh, especially for vulnerable communities and, and um, housing that so many people have no access to housing and, and, and when the Latinos hear about these things because they ask me the same question that you asked me and I talk, you know, housing accessible for all, um, they said, look, I'm voting for you because they believe in what I believe. You know, I'm a member of the uh, National, National Tertiary Education Union, the NTU, and I'm also a member of the Nurses and Midwives um, Association. Um, active in those as well so i i uh, i'm a very strong believer of, of the strength of the union and that people should be in unions to get to actually so their rights are respected and and, and especially again in health 
Uh, there's been a lot of things that are, are, are been happening. We know that recently we had a major protest of the nurses and midwives in, in, in New South Wales because of the poor conditions where with COVID made, the, it put in, into evidence the failures of the system you know, for the workers and for the patients. So yes, the union is quite important. Uh, because uh, I think it, it, it's interesting you said, you know, the Greens are progressing. Yes, they're progressive, but I don't think they're progressing enough for what I believe in, that they're not going to make radical changes of things that need radical changes. Um, the, the government, unfortunately, because of the Liberal government, things have gone, you know, really bad in the last, you know, I would say I've been in Australia for 34 years now, and I can see how the situation has got worse and especially in the areas of education health the privatization of, of the age care system privatization of health and many other areas and um, the cost of living you know is very it's gone worse in the labor governments and the liberal governments and whoever comes next is is gonna have a big job to try to fix it you know, yes, I do believe that the Greens have a lot of good policies, but I do believe, and that's why I joined the Socialist Alliance uh, and the Socialist Party, because I believe the, that what we stand for is stronger and is something that will help this country. Well, I'm from South America originally, okay? So I, I have a lot of comments to say. We, we lived um, a repressive government we lived uh, what it is to, to live under a capitalist society where actually the commercialization uh, of the land, of the water, of the electricity, of all the, the natural resources, uh, you know, being sold to international companies because of money, the government has sold our country. We're now fighting in Chile, for example, people are fighting to be able to have free water which is a basic right. You know, we're full of water everywhere, but it's the international companies, companies own it. And that is to do with a capitalist regime. It's a capitalist society where, you know, the, the, the very little people own the resources and own, you know, the, the superannuation. And, you know, the Chileans and the Latin Americans are fighting for all these things that are being under the capitalist society have been sold to international companies as people, don't own anything so we're now trying to nationalize our you know resources because they they they, they belong to somewhere else and the people are suffering they're hungry they're hungry so yeah i feel very strong about it and i, I know how it is to live under a capitalist society and uh, where we got to an extreme poverty you know and i believe australia is a, a capitalist society it's got social uh, uh, benefits to people yes my mom thinks when we first came, she said, this is sort of all mixed, it's a capitalist, but they also, they give pension to people. If you're unemployed, you know, you, you get some money. So that there's good things within this society. We have Medicare, but they still more and more are going toward, towards capitalism. Uh, and we live, we live that in, in Latin America. Uh, we are living, people are living that in Latin America, when there's repression, when they have put military dictatorships because the governments were actually nationalizing. You know, we have the experience of Allende in Chile when he was nationalizing the resources, the copa, you know, gold, you know, cotton industry was nationalized because we own our own resources. And of course, the United States and the people, the same Chilean people that were extreme right, the rich people of the country didn't like it. And there was a military dictatorship to try to change the model, you know, the economic model to a capitalist model. Then in Argentina, then in Uruguay and, and many other countries. So, so uh, we have experienced what it is, the, the force and, 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 and we call it the boot of capitalism. Yeah. Well, the inequality, inequalities, isn't it? When the rich, when the rich have access, again, back to the to, to my favorite subject, health. You know, when you if you have private insurance, uh, you have better health than the person that has had public health. And then we know that in some countries like United States, you go to emergency, and and if you don't not cover covered by the insurance, you don't get surgery. If you're not covered by certain you know parts of the other insurance, you don't get dialysis.
You don't get an operation when you have a broken leg. You don't get, you know, medicines if it's not covered. Um, so that is that is quite obvious, you know, that is, you know, the, the, the very rich and the people can afford to have access to health, that can have access to education, that they can have access to to uh, to better, you know, conditions, housing, for example. So the inequalities, that is, I think, one of the biggest disadvantages uh, of the capitalist system. You know, the rich, very, very rich, but the, the, the people that are bad, you know, doesn't matter, that is at the expense of others. And that's, that's the thing that, I, you know, I would never be a capitalist. Young people give me a lot of hope when you, you think you when I when you think that you know uh, you know I, I think I was so happy when when um, the young people actually started with Greta you know with the with the you know the, to fight and she's still fighting for justice especially for the environment she's has done a few declarations in relation to to Palestine and Gaza and other things but um, I think uh, I believe in people and I think when things become a more extreme in the sense of when people are more hungry, when people are having, you know, when the nurses went to protest, you know, a few weeks ago in New South Wales when things became more extreme. I think I have faith that in people that they will, you know, claim for better conditions and social justice. Um, yeah. uh, what gives me hope to with socialism is that that's a light at the end of the tunnel, that this should be something, and I think more people should think, you know, eco-socialism and socialism, that the things should improve, you know, in, with the environment, with, you know, the way we distribute the resources, which is very important, uh, the, the way we, we we give access to to different, you know, um, you know, education and health and all those things, uh, and the plan for making it better. For, for our society. Uh, that's what I believe in socialism. That's what I feel that, you know, it is possible, not easy, because we have a lot of enemies. We have, you know, a lot of, um, you know, the media and people think, you know, you know communism, you are a communist and, and you're going to eat the children alive and you're going to, you know, all these things. I remember in Chile, they used to say that, you know, communists eat, eat babies and all that. Yeah. Of course, there's been mistakes with all regimes, and I think any every regime that is, you know, dict dictatorial is not good. Um, I that's why I'm in Socialist Alliance because we're very democratic, and I've seen it. I've seen it in action. <laughs>